It's gonna be all nostalgic for Super Nintendo era. Oh yeah, I just <laughs> modded. Uh, I just modded this so that the graphics actually looked a little worse. Ah. Uh because -huh. a lot of people were complaining about the Steam port that it was too glossy, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, and this is Let's Gay. Oh. Today on the show, my friend Akira Hasani is here. Yep. Thanks so much for coming on, Akira. Thanks for having me. Akira is basically my number one. He's a one-man, uh, 24-hour news cycle. He's my news source on Facebook. And it's crazy because Akira posts so many times, a lot of times a day. Most of the people I know who do that, I, like, will unfollow them because it gets on my nerves. But for some reason, and I can't quantify what it is about the things you choose to post that keeps me engage, you know? Yeah, I basically just treat Facebook like I treat Tumblr. That's, that's the, the secret right there. Well, not exactly, because I know you have uh, some spicy pictures that you like to post on Tumblr. Uh, the Tumblr's not safe for, for version. Or not safe for Facebook version. That's true. That's true. Um, how long have you been, uh, how long have you been, like, a sort of heavy, heavy Facebook user, would you say? About two and a half years, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at first, like, I moved here, I didn't have many friends, and, like, I was, like, living in one of these, like, punk houses or hostels, and some guy mentioned, like, hey, why don't you just, like, add a bunch of random people, and ma just meet them in, like, shows or whatever, if you like, post, like, really good stuff, I'm like, okay, I'll do that, started doing that, started doing that on Facebook, and I noticed, like, a lot of people posted, like, a lot of those, like, cheesy, like, inspirational pictures, Yeah, and I hated that, I hated it so much, so I just, like, Say fuck it, and just like um, post it all, all my like all sorts of content that like appeal to me in order to drown that out. Yeah, I mean, I f I feel as if you, I mean, you post you post things from magazines too a lot of times that I that I'll sometimes get on my nerves. Mm. But something I don't know what it is about just the gen your general vibe mm. that's just so much less annoying than than pretty much anyone I know who's who's sort of doing that Facebook 24-hour news cycle. Mm. And you're also kind of one of the only guys I know who... I know a lot of gay guys who do this, but you're the only straight guy... You're like one of two straight guys I know that will openly post pictures of girls you think are hot on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's bold in, 20, in 2016. I almost said 2015. <laughs> We're halfway through 2016. Hmm. Yeah, we're closer to um, Neo Tokyo exploding. Yeah. Two, two and a half more years. Is that what year it happens in Akira? Yeah, 2019, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Akira, okay, so now here's my question for uh -huh. you, because now you just immediately took it to Akira. Is Akira your given name or your, your mutant name? Oh, it's my actual name. It's, it's your like, actual name? It's my birth name. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, like my, my mom thought it sounded cute after I saw a Kurosawa film. She saw, like, Seven Samurai, and she's like, I, I like that, I fucks with that. And then she gave it to me, yeah. I was, like, this close to being called, um, Charles Dudley the Third. Charles Dudley the Third. <laughs> yeah. That well, would have been pretty good, too. Yeah. It's very kingly. It's very kingly. I'm also a third, John Gibson Martin the Third. Uh-huh. You could so, be, like, a character in, like, Game of Thrones, maybe. Maybe. Are you a big Game of Thrones guy? I haven't watched it. I was waiting for, like, waiting for it to end, and then I watched all of it in one go. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so intense. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that would be like. 15 more episodes than I can. 15 more episodes. Yeah, it's gonna be over soon. Yeah. You can sort of feel it, too, if you watch the show. You can kind of tell that they're, that everything's sort of converging a little bit. Mm. But, uh, it's a crazy show, man. White people are crazy. That's <laughs> sort of the thesis of Game of Thrones for me. I almost feel like I should watch it back to back with Berserk, which is also something I haven't really watched. But it seems it has, like, a similar vibe. Berserk? Yeah. I don't know that show. What's that show about? Um, it's, like, this Japanese manga about that's, like, very Western and fantasy influence about, like, this guy named Guts who fights demons, and he's going after, like, his former, squ uh, former squad team leader that betrayed him, like, in the past. And is that over? Is that still ongoing? It's still ongoing in like almost twenty years now. Oh, it's like twenty season, twenty seasons or something of it. Um, twenty years of manga. The guy like that puts it out. It's really slow. It's usually put out like as a monthly, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Instead, of, like a weekly, as like a lot of like popular manga. Well, that's the way they do it here in America mm -hmm. because the monthly comic books because American artists are lazy. <laughs> 
At least when compared to manga and anime artists, it's insane. Mm. Well, there's also the inking, too, like the, the coloring that maybe adds to it. Because most manga are in black and white. Yeah. I guess that's a good point, yeah. Yeah. And most manga is written by the same person who drew it, right. correct? Yeah. Whereas in American comics, most of the time, not all the time, but especially these days, about 90% of the time, I would say, it's a writer and then an artist, two sort of separate entities. Yeah. Which can have its advantages, but also its disadvantages, I think, when you're reading a comic book and the art style suddenly changes. Mm. Uh, so, Akira, where are you from originally? Are you an L.A. native? Uh, no, I'm actually from Jersey. I'm oh, so am I. Yes, we've talked about this before, so yeah. am I. Like Neptune, New Jersey. Well, I was born in Patterson, but I lived in Neptune, which is by Asbury Park, which is like not as cool as Neptune, California, and like Veronica Mars. But <laughs> <laughs> wait, Veronica Mars is set in like, Neptune, California. Yeah, like some sort of weird non-existent suburb of LA. Oh, I see. Well, Neptune—that's a pretty impressive name. Yeah, I think we're called like the Spartans or the Tritons or something like that. I forgot. That was your high school team name. Yeah. I didn't participate in sports back then. How was high school for you? Let's be honest. Um, it was like, it was like whatever. I ghosted the last two years. I just bit, stopped paying attention to everything really. Just like try to pass. I had my group of friends. I, like I hung out at the bad kids table though. The bad kids table. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Uh, what were the other tables? Um, there's like the jock table, and then there's the ROTC table, which is right next to like the anime geek table. And I was on the anime geek table for the first little bit, but I just got so tired of Dragon Ball Z at that time, since it was like just getting big. And everybody's talking about it every single day. Yeah. That I switched tables. I can hear that. Dragon Ball, pretty much, uh, it never goes away. It's yeah. insane how yeah. it stayed. It stayed popular. All these, all these years, and it's so ridiculous too. Yeah, that's another Akira, Akira Toriyama too. Yeah, but Akira Toriyama, uh, uh, master of of illustration, created Chrono Trigger and all that stuff. So, mm. shout outs to him. Especially Tobal number one. Nobody knows about that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Was that a anime? Oh, uh, that was a fighting game. It was a for, fighting game, for right? PlayStation One. Yes, I I remember the name, but I couldn't quite place it. It's is it Tobal with an exclamation point? Maybe. Um, I forgot it was an exclamation point, but I remember there was like a lot of grappling involved in that. Oh, okay, yeah, and, and they made a couple of those. Did like one or two? There, I remember like a few characters. I remember the guy with the green beanie, the guy with the the crazy Akira Yuki hair. Yeah, and uh, the wrestler girl. It was definitely someone who had that sort of signature Dragon Ball hairstyle, but I think they had red hair or mm. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Something just a little different. Mm. So, so you were at the bad kids table? Yeah. That's a pretty general term. What defines the bad kids? Uh, what, what, what were they doing? They're the ones that did all the drugs and, like, drank, or, like, underage drinking and all that. Yeah. They, they got, they had to get GEDs instead of, like, um, graduating, like, normal. Oh, yeah, they well, all... Like, one or two of them did, but, like, the other ones were just, like, a bit more whatever. Mm-hmm. And what about you? Did you... Were you getting into any drinking or any of that stuff in high school? I was, like, so straight-edged back then. I hung out with them, but I was, like, the one that didn't do anything. I didn't even drink till I was, like, 20, 21. Yeah. I didn't even smoke weed till I was, like, 25. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, pretty much the same with me, because my dad had made a bet with me that if I made it to 21 without drinking, he would give me, like, a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So, even though I was friends with all the bad kids, I never, I never did any of the bad kid things. Mm. And, uh, and then where'd you go after high school? I went to, like, Full Sail in Florida for a little bit from... Ooh, Florida. Yeah, we went there for recording arts, but I didn't, I really did not like Florida, so I moved back to Jersey and went to a techno, technical school in New York. Uh, for like New York City? Yep. Yeah. Went there for digital media, so like a lot of web design, graphic yeah. design, that sort of thing. And you said you originally went to Florida for recording? Did you used to do a lot of music? Uh, no, I was interested, so I just wanted to try it out. Just wanted to try it out. Yeah. But it's like, they were telling me like half the stuff I couldn't learn like during an internship or, or like online. So it was like, why am I spending $40,000 40, I don't have? Right. Yeah. But after that, I was like, oh, whatever. And then you just went and... Uh, 
And did you commute from New Jersey to New York? Yeah, I took the New Jersey Transit, like, every day. <laughs> How long was that? Uh, the, the actual trip was, like, about hour 40 to hour 50 minutes from where I was at in Jersey. Every, each way? Yeah. Wow, that's brutal. But why? But you just couldn't afford living in New York. Right. And you're... It's just so... The cost is just so uh, insane in New York. Yeah. And this is when it was just starting to get super expensive. When was that? Around late thousands, early tens. Okay. Yeah. So how many uh, years old are you? Um, 30. About to be 31 next week. You're a year older than me. <laughs> how did it feel turning 30 for you? It, it felt like I played the game a long time and I'm now starting to get... Now starting to find all where all the traps are. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, stepping them in as much. Okay. Yeah. I learned how to do the, the Hadouken, finally. I finally figured out the motion. Okay. That's what 30 felt like for me. The game of life? Yeah. I can do the Super Hadouken now. What are what are some of the traps? Uh, you know, like, the, the crazy, like, bear traps that they, like, put hidden, but it, it shakes a little bit when you walk over it. Okay. Or, or, like, the train, where, like, you see the train, the tracks move, but you don't really pay attention to it, and then the train hits you, as well as all the, like, cannon fodder enemies. <laughs> okay, so you're you're still keeping it metaphorical on me here. You're not ready to get specific. What are uh, we talking okay. about? Oh, the actual like I mean like just general like adult social mistakes and um trying to figure out what I want to do with my life and just that sort of thing. The growing up part, adulting. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people. Everyone I've talked to recently said they really were glad to. They really were, enjoyed their thirties, mm. especially people who were post post 30s hmm. uh but uh what so what so what uh what's the hadouken what have you mastered now what are you what are you better at now that you struggled with before i guess it's like talking and going out and like i don't know how should i explain it hmm. uh, it just seemed like all the same stuff i was able to do earlier but like i'm just more just more efficient at it like you remember like when you first do it you can barely do it at, like every match like, mm -hmm. maybe, like, once, and you miss. But now you can, like, do, like, all, throughout the entire match and, like, just basically spam Hadoukens. Yeah, you can combo. Yeah. And do combos, too. Because uh, you go out a lot, it yeah. seems, based on your, what you say on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook and the Instagrams. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, like, an X-Man about town. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and now, you, you also are, like, extremely... Back to that metaphor, like, extremely proficient at v some video games, as I understand it. A little bit. Not as much as I used to, be, used to, since I haven't had a game system in a while, but I remember being pretty decent. What game was it, though, that you beat on perfect with on the hardest difficulty or something? Uh, Street Fighter Alpha. The think, very first Street Fighter Alpha. Is either that one or the second? I actually I think it was the first one. Yeah, with Ken. With Ken, that's yeah. who you played as. yeah. And you got the you beat the whole game without all, completely perfect on the hardest setting. Yeah. When and how did you possibly do that? That was somewhere um, around the time, like about two years after it came out on Sega Saturn. Oh, so, so you were you were just a kid, really? Yeah, I, I had all the time to do it back then. And you had a Sega Saturn? Yeah. That's amazing. I had Sega Saturn, I had Street Fighter Alpha for it, I had, um, Guns, not Gunstar Heroes, but the, the, the stealth sequel, um, Guardian Heroes. Oh man, the Sega Saturn, that's like, really taking it back. <laughs> it's sad, Sega, I feel like, kind of gets written out of video game history sometimes because of, of just them sort of losing the war, you know? Yeah. Really. The... Fantasy Star 4, that game, did you ever play that game? I never got a chance to play that one. That was a Sega Genesis game, and it was an RPG, mm. not totally dissimilar from Final Fantasy in some regards, mm -hmm. but the the sort of narrative sections of the game were all done in these, these pixelated anime, almost, I would say, comic book style cutscenes. Mm where they would just cut to these sort of different images and almost drawings, obviously done in pixels and that type of art. But the story is told so much more effectively through that than they were in a lot of these old Final Fantasy games, which also had great stories, but I just think that Fantasy Star really brought something to 
to uh, to storytelling in games uh, that maybe doesn't. It was just so. It was just so different than anything I saw on a on a old old school RPG. And then Nights in the Dreams. Did you ever play that game? Yeah, I definitely played that one. That was fun. People sort of remember that one, but that game was just so weird. <laughs> I mean, how would you describe it? Even it's uh just dream. Let me see. let me think. It's like Super Mario meets Superman in a surrealist environment. Surrealist Sega. Like maximum surrealist Sega environment. Sure. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> it's it's definitely uh, a dream, a dreamy sort of scape, right? You know, yeah. the, I mean, you're literally in dreams and you're flying mm -hmm. all over the place. It was great. Yeah, and it's it classic. had a soundtrack, the the classic good, awesome Sega soundtracks that they used to put out. Mm hmm. That I constantly am reminded of whenever I hear like rave music. The little Ray piano, mostly because of Streets of Rage, I, I reckon. Streets of Rage. Now that has to be one of the best video game soundtracks of all time. Yeah. The second Streets of Rage, even specifically. Oh, I just healed those guys with that. <laughs> they are weak, strong against fire, and now one of my guys is a zombie. Uh, that Streets of Rage is so, uh, sort of, iconic. I think in terms of the soundtrack and everything, it's just. Like, every kind of dance music that was popular at that time was mined for that soundtrack in such an exceptional way, I think. Mm. To the point that you could actually throw dance parties to it, as you have, like, one time, when you, like, did the Shoot Your Rage Night. Yes! Yeah. Uh, yes, that's how we met, in fact. Yeah, Shakira yeah. and I met because I was having a Streets... I wanted to just play the Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack. I just wanted to play it out at a party... And so I threw this party down the street at Melody Lounge, and we just did, we just hung out and listened to the whole soundtrack of Streets of Rage 2. Yeah. I'd like to do that again though, because Melody Lounge, first of all, it was a weeknight, so that that there right away you're gonna have a problem getting people to come. Mm. Second of all, even though the place is called Melody Lounge, they don't really want you to blast the music, or maybe they just didn't want me to blast the music. I don't know. <laughs> so I. I'm hopefully gonna throw start throwing a new party at uh, Precinct, which is a bar downtown, and uh, we're gonna do it again. Mm. Is my is my dream my dream plan? Like various music, dance video game dance music and maybe like a little bit of chip tune. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit of nightcore even. Mm. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, I don't even know. Yeah rap songs that talk about video games. Oh, uh, I remember that whole nerdcore movement from, like, mid-thousands. Yeah, MC, what's his name? Chris. MC, MC Chris. Chris, yeah. He was sort of the the champion of that. I'll have to revisit some of that, maybe. I can't remember if I would even still like any of that music. Mm. But a lot of people did. Yeah, I remember the Tussin and Fett's Vet. Oh, I don't know those. Um, there's the song when you, like, rap about, like, Boba Fett's Vet. It's Corvette. Oh, that's pretty good. And there's another song about Robotustin, which is probably like the center hip hop song in terms of content, but yeah, from a geeky perspective, he's good. Yeah, there's the Soldier Boy's "Bitch, I Look Like Goku" is pretty <laughs> iconic. Uh. And then I guess Young Lean raps a lot about video games and mm -hmm. Mario Kart and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what do you do? You know Young Lean? What do you think about him? I think he's interesting. Like and like. You usually think Sweden, when it comes to music, is like ABBA and like black metal. No, mm -hmm. more so melodic death metal than black metal, but Sweden. You don't, you don't think weird, obscure genres on SoundCloud. No. <laughs> you definitely don't think rap. <laughs> what you don't think of when you think of Scandinavia is rap. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and so it was definitely, uh, he's definitely a surprising um, entry into, I mean, he's sort of like, more, I guess, health goth would be sort of the the genre that he's most closely associated with. But I sort of feel like all genres of music now are just like a joke, right? <laughs> sort of a joke, like a, a tongue-in-cheek joke. I think you were the one who shared that article about, like, every music genre now is kind of a troll. Yeah, it's pretty much, if you think about it, like, Vaporwave. Is, because it's too hard to make, like, a legit, like, subculture these days, because everything just gets swallowed up. 
by all the cool hunters immediately the second you hear like a, a blip of it of something new it, it ends up on the radio or yeah. ends up in a rihanna song or something or, like that or ends up as on a shirt in like h&m right right because uh you know the the, the consumer culture has just gotten smarter right yeah it's, it's like the the tx Whereas, like, the 90s was a like, T-1000, but... Yes, it's an upgraded model of the Terminator. That's a very, very good way of looking at it. You're really into the, the, the metaphors. You're just pulling those out of your hat over here. Yeah. Yeah, actually, not even, like, the TX. It'd be, like, the John Con... Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> the, the latest, like, Skynet Terminator. Uh-huh. Where he's, like, what, gas metal, sand metal, like nano machines or whatever yeah yeah i kind of wish they like made another one though it did well in china well enough in china at least the last terminator yeah oh i didn't see it you didn't think it was that bad i heard it was hard, really bad it's like it, they did not get like put out the the twist in the trailer a lot of people probably would have liked it more if they knew what there was like a there's like a little twist to it yeah that they gave away so hard in the trailer it's like no don't do that don't oh do they that. gave it away in the trailer yeah. oh okay yeah see that's the that's the other thing the trailers and sort of I feel just right now you can get the whole you get the whole plot of a movie from a trailer and people go so crazy over movie trailers now <laughs> especially for big movies like big Marvel movies or stuff like they'll just pick apart ev literally ever they'll go through and pick apart every second of the trailer mm. I mean I'm guilty of doing it too I was on a show where that's what we did but yeah but uh but it's crazy the industry around just movie trailers now yeah almost bigger i wonder than that it seems like bigger than the actual movies because they're sort of banking on this level of anticipation that'll suck you in you and know the, and then there's like green and red band trailers so they get even more like like uh spoiler spoilered from the red band trailer because they don't they show a lot of gore it's like i want to wait for that yeah and then you have trailers four trailers it's, it's kind of ridiculous and the fandoms are so sleuthy now that if you figure out, they figure out everything before they happen. Like, there was nothing... Like, wouldn't it have been so much cooler if they had done that... Like, if they had done that whole last Captain America movie and not told anyone that Spider-Man was going to be in it, like, at all? Like, right. think about how insane that would have been. <laughs> to, to sit in, like, for, for people... To just be sitting in the theater and then all of a sudden Spider-Man, who, like, in legal terms, they didn't even know was a possibility. Yeah, that's the whole reason how Black Panther got in it, because they weren't sure if they were get to, like, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Spider like, uh, Spider-Man was supposed to be, like, the Black Panther role in, in it in terms of, like, his, like, how big of a piece of, like, the story he got in there. Right. But... I guess oh, because it, they were still negotiating or whatever. Yeah. Well, thank God, let's be honest, because... <laughs> Black Panther is, I mean, one of my favorite Avengers, if not probably my favorite Avenger. Mm. All right. Let's see if this guy will. Okay. Do I have to talk to him a bunch of times? What do I need to do to get this guy to? Because it just says on my strategy guide, talk to this guy and he'll join your party. Uh, I think but... you, you need to give him some fructose shampoo. Oh he yeah. There's quite a lot of hair. There's a lot of hair. Yeah. All right. Where's my phone? Because now I'm getting annoyed. Let's look it up. How mm. to get Umaro in your party? Mm. So, because um, I know you're a big, you're a big Black Panther fan. Yeah. Now, especially after that movie, I didn't really get into him until this movie. Like now, I'm like, I want more. Like all. Oh. And gonna... and what 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 uh what do you like about him? I don't know. I think it's the fact that he's like so. He's like, he kind of reminds me of the guy I wanted to be when I was a kid, mm -hmm. when I was an adult. Something about that grabbed like the, my inner child and just like got me like really excited. The part of me that didn't, hasn't been excited about like a major black character since Blade, right? Or Raven from like Tekken, or even like um, Afro Samurai. But like prior to that, we didn't really have any on the mainstream like level. Yeah, Afro Samurai. Oh, that was great though, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> That's such a such a good one. Uh, oh, I think. We need to have Mog in our party? I'm mm. not entirely sure. Mm. Yes. That, I think, is going to be the trick, based on this. Mm. 
If Mog is in the party, he will join. Okay, so now we have to go all the way back out and back in. Ugh, so annoying. Bl Blade is great. Bl Afro Samurai was so great. Mm. Oh my gosh. When it, there's like, isn't there like a scene in that where he's like falling? There's some like amazing scene where he's like falling out of a plane, or I can't remember what it was, but I just remember being just amazed by the animation in that movie. Yeah. Uh, and it is so rare, also in anime, to see to see black actors in manga. Mm, I actually kind of feel like I have the opposite opinion. I just feel like I see them way more like anime and manga than like mainstream American, like or at least like dark skin characters. Sure. Yeah, it's like. I remember when I see K Dash reverse on the King of Fighters, like, who is this guy? He's so awesome. And he's like dark skinned and he's the main character. Mm -hmm. and I was like, whoa. And then there's this um, manga that came out a few years ago called Until Death Do Us Part. Okay. Where, where there's like an entire team of African assassins and they made them all look different and they all had their own personalities and fighting styles. And they weren't like warped. Oh. They, were, they actually posed a threat. And they even t t you know, teamed up with like the, the main characters for a bit. That's pretty good. And then, even Naruto, the entire, like, village of, like, black ninjas, like, oh, everybody yeah. was like, oh my god. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think it is, it's, it is disgraceful that it took, uh, Marvel till now to make, uh, in this sort of moment of Marvel's renaissance, or whatever you want to call it, mm. to make a film... Or to have on the docket a film with a black lead, you know? Mm -hmm. And also the thing that's so great to me about Black Panther is that so many black characters are, uh, you know, based off a pre-existing white character. Right. Like, there was already a white Green Lantern. Love Jon Stewart. Yeah. There was already Batman when they did, uh, what was his name, Batwing. I mean, the list just goes kind of on and on. Mm -hmm. And Black Panther was always sort of just... And the same, I think, with female characters, you know, there's always Batgirl and Supergirl. It's kind of what I like about Wonder Woman is she's not she's not a female version of a male character. But it's true. Uh, also, there's so much anime that gets made, right? Yeah, so much. It's like basically similar to like the TV shows over here, where there's like seasons... There's multiple shows every season, and like a lot of them, like thirteen episodes, versus like twenty four, or like thirteen or twenty four episodes, and they're done. Yeah. So it's like there's so much, and they have to include all the movies and like the ovas. There's mm -hmm. so much to go through, and we're only like in the past since like oh five, I believe, is when we started actually paying attention to that fact instead of just getting all the crazy violent stuff here. Right. Right, because there are anime shows about all different types of things, like, you know. Uh, uh, baseball or something. Yeah, and then you have the uh, demographics. Like, I think that's one of the reasons why um, be, like women got to like into manga and anime like way quicker than like American comics during that time. Like the um, the whole scene got like sort of blew up. Sure. Because you have stuff like Nana and Paradise Kiss and like all the the which got su Sujo stuff. Mm hmm. And then also you have like. You also have Jose, which is kind of like slept on, like the adult woman genre, where it's like less like idealistic as like Sujo. And then there's the what is it, the Fujiyoshi, the rot, the rotten women. Yeah, yeah. Who love the like gay porn manga, which I think is such a great, <laughs> such a great, uh, such a like weird. You know, did you watch um the Princess, Princess Jellyfish? I haven't. I've watch very little and I've read only I've read a little Baro which is sort of like yeah. the gay bear version of yeah, manga yeah. but I wa what I watched was it was a documentary that I think Ellen Page did about like queer people in other countries did you see that? Uh, I haven't gotten around to it is it on Netflix? Uh, it's on like YouTube uh -huh, okay. but there's there's a there's one where she goes to um, Japan and she meets some of the these ladies who love gay yaoi uh, manga and she gives them kind of a hard time and it's kind of, because she kind of feels like I don't know maybe that they're commodifying or objectifying gay culture but it's like just let them like this do you realize how weird and different this is from American culture like no American women that I know of I hardly know any American women that would admit to getting turned on by two guys making out. Whereas, 
I know so many straight men who would say that they got turned on by girls making out. I mean, it's like the like so much porno is like quote unquote lesbian scenes, right? Yeah. So I think it just it kind of points maybe more to uh, to our own uh, prudeness. Yeah. I mean, there was that two seconds in the MySpace era where, like, there's a whole bunch of dudes kissing each other. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't remember that, but I believe it. Like, boy kissing was, like, an entire thing on, like, the MySpace era of, like, two seconds. It was hilarious. It was interesting and hilarious. And were, like, were you big on MySpace? Yeah. Well, it wasn't, like, big, but I was, like, pretty, like, I used it quite a bit. Like, if I had moved here during that era, I probably would have, like, like, what you call it, adapted way quicker. Yeah. Because, like, it was um, L.A. based, so, like, a lot of people on there were from L.A. Oh, it was. I didn't know that. I saw a picture of Tom recently. <laughs> he looked so so crazy. and He looked like, I don't know, like, he looked like how someone who was maybe in, like, Panic at the Disco would look mm. in, like, ten years. <laughs> like, sort of that, like, subtle mall goth type yeah. of a... I mean, he's just looked exactly the same in a way, but there's something a little... He just looked a little scared. <laughs> He's like all the darkness from like the, the all the years that's passed from my space like mm-hmm. leave, leaving the mainstream. The dream is over for mm-hmm. Tom. And oh, it's not man. alive in Portland. It's not alive in Portland. No, <laughs> no, it's it's not. Have you ever been up to Portland? No, I have a lot of friends from there though. Oh yeah, yeah. I I am often tempted by it, but then I just. It's, like, so white up there. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> and, like, that, like... <laughs> I just... This is the thing is, I almost feel like, oh, maybe that would be good. Because when I'm, like, living here in L.A., I'm living in Chinatown. I'm living in Highland Park. I'm always like, oh, I'm, like, the white guy moving in and ruining everything for these poor people. <laughs> but then I sort of feel like, oh, if I moved to a neighborhood that was... If I moved to a town that was really white... Like, a lot of the people there are probably kind of racist. <laughs> and I just, that would be even, like, worse, you know? Yeah. Like, that would drive me crazy. <laughs> but, anyway. Mm. Would like to visit Portland, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would definitely like to visit Portland. So, okay, so wait. So you went to school in New York. How did you end up in L.A.? Um, because, like, after, like, school in New York, I went through, like, a core life crisis because there's just no jobs in Jersey. And it was, like, hard to, like, get a job in New York without, like, a New York address. And eventually my mom was like, why don't you, like, visit your cousins in L.A.? I'm like, okay. And then the whole, like, Fresh Prince music, like, theme started to play in the yeah. background. And then I got in the Virgin Atlantic, the Virgin, like, the Virgin Airlines with their weird sex light and, and moved over here. There you go. There you have it. So, you, but you didn't have a job lined up when you came out here. Yeah, that took a bit. That could, took a quite a while. So you were just staying with your cousins. Yeah, I had I saved a bunch of money when I got like a job doing retail. And I was gonna try to go to Toronto, but like the entire immigration progress to get into Canada was like a little like daunting. So oh like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, where else can I go? So I went here. I have mm-hmm. just lived off the money I saved up until I got a job. Well, because you had a degree in like graphic design or something like that. Um. I, I didn't really like finish the school, right? But, but you had a you had a background. In yeah, um, I I did get like certified in, like the all the Adobe products like separately. Right. I like, went to a different thing and just like did all the tests that way. But so so and there's not a lot of jobs for that in New Jersey, you know. I mean, there, I guess there's jobs for graphic design in a way everywhere, but it's not like here where there's it's just such a create just so many creative industries, right? I mean, like, if you live close to New York or Philly, you're probably, like, way better off than, like, where I was at in, like, Neptune. Neptune. Only thing there in Neptune is, like, dead dreams, oh. uh, hospitals, and retail. Hospitals! <laughs> hospitals as the as the key feature. <laughs> because, like, that's where that's where your work art is at. Like, hospitals, like, those, like, medical facilities, those industrial park mall type places. <laughs> and then you have retail, and there's not much else outside that it's yeah like, it's like when it was, you raise your family here you don't have a lot of fan, fun here you go to like asbury park or something or go to new york or philly or atlantic city mm-hmm. you don't really like have fun in neptune yeah it doesn't sound doesn't sound good i mean oh man 
Uh, New Jersey, it's it's one of those things where, do you find yourself defending it ever, or just, no, you just say it was awful and you just write it off? I, say, I usually try to be balanced with it. I say, like, there's parts of Jersey that's really good, but if you get stuck in a part that isn't, it's torture. Yeah, sure. There's, like, if people say, like, um, LA's public transportation is bad, New Jersey's a bit worse. No, New Jersey's is, is just, it's really just mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, like... I mean, so many places in this country, I feel, if you don't have a car, you just, like, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah. Okay, I really don't want to fight that blue dragon. I know it's somewhere over here. Okay, good. Uh, but I just remember, I went to community college in New Jersey, and the bus came once, like, every hour and a half or something, and I was yeah. always the only person on it. Yeah. The, like, bus driver would be, like, trying to, like, pick up girls or something. <laughs> And I'd just be, like, sitting there, like, uh, okay. Yeah, basically. I, I pretty much had to take the cab vast majority of time if I had to get to the, the train on time. Oh, boy, and that's gonna... That that's adds gonna up. Add up. <laughs> yeah. that was before Uber times. Yeah. Well, if you had, like, a regular, they might, like, take some money off. Like, if you had use the same deal, like, if you get his car. Oh, okay. That's good. But pre-Uber, was tough times. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh... But you like it out here. Yeah. I like the, the whole pioneer aspect. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like... What does that mean? Because um, California is like the gush, gold rush state. It is. So, like, there's still that pioneer spirit. It's like a lot newer than the rest of America. So, like, it's, it feels like you're still building up. You're on, you're on, like, a different track. You're on something new. You're not on something that's already pre-established as much. Yeah, well, pre-established by, like, white people. But, yeah, yes, yeah. By, by America. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, I went to the Natural History Museum recently, and they, I took this, like, funny tour, and they were t saying that, actually, the people who made the most money in the gold rush were the people who sold the supplies mm. to the people who, who were panning for gold. Right. It was this supplier mm. that really made a lot of money, because the actual amount of gold, uh, if you adjust for inflation or something, now is only, like... Uh, like a hundred million dollars or something, <laughs> like which sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually not that much money yeah. if you think about how many people came out here for the gold rush. Mm. Yeah, isn't that like how it usually is? Like the person that like sells to both sides or all sides is the one that makes out in the end. The person who made out in the end there was the person who sold the dream of the gold rush, yeah, and right. I think that's still that's still very LA, you yeah. know, selling a dr you selling a dream. Mm. Um, a dream, a dream lifestyle, dream money, uh, that type of thing. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm buying into it. We kind of all are, to one extent or another. A little bit. Though it's kind of funny how, like, in preparation to a movie here, I like to watch, like, a lot of movies, or in preparation to move, it, move in or travel in anywhere, I watch a lot of movies about the area to get maybe, like, a sense of the vibe. Mm -hmm, and, okay. And for L.A., and... Instead of, like, watching all the glamorous movies, I watch, like, Crank, High Voltage, and, like, a lot of Greg Araki films. <laughs> well, Greg Araki, that's just the best. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm surprised how, about how accurate it was. Like, the first, like, couple days I moved here, a bear, like, ran around Glendale attacking people. Well, not attacking people, but, like, stealing their food. Yeah. And then one guy went on a high-speed chase and, like, caught on Hollywood because he had swag. That was his entire reason. He just wanted to go on a high speed chase for the yeah. sake, for just for the sake of the, yeah. just for the pure fuck of it all. Yeah, it was very crank, I believe. And then the scenes, very, various like types of scenes, seem very Greg Rockian to me. Oh yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Especially some of the couples. I like, I mean, some of the couples like you kind of remind me of that couple in like nowhere right now. <laughs> Which one? Um, what's his name? Ryan Philippi? and oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, where they're just so bitchy and pissy. Yeah. That's so great. It's amazing how many people are in that movie Nowhere that have now become just such huge stars, and then that movie is, like, completely forgotten, yeah. you know? It doesn't doesn't even exist on uh, DVD, uh, and the VHS copies of it are so hard to come by. Yeah, it wasn't, I guess it wasn't, didn't get this level of fame that Dune Generation got. That's true, that's true, because I think it was a little less, like, just insanely violent and graphic than maybe that movie was. yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, that's, I, that's probably my favorite one of his. 
Yeah. Ragaraki. I still haven't seen like his pre Dune Generation movies. I saw everything after it except for White Bird and the Blizzard. But mm-hmm. like everything else I, I liked. Well, Smiley Face, that's yeah. just such a great comedy. Yeah. And it's so rare you see a stoner comedies with a female lead, and she just sold it, I thought. Anna Ferris, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I knew a guy who f- lived in Texas, and there's a Gre- Greg Araki movie, an early one, really, really budget. And it, um, it's like these two guys find out they're HIV positive, I guess, and then they just go on, like, a killing spree. And at the end of the movie, this was in the, you know, this was in the 90s, mm. uh, when AIDS was still going on, and um, and at the end of the movie, there's something uh, something about like just like a fuck you to the U.S. government for not for not negotiating or acknowledging AIDS in any real way, mm-hmm. and this was it was screened in like a theater in Texas, mostly gay audience, but because it was Texas. <laughs> That people booed during <laughs> some people booed at that at that sort of fuck you America moment because they were such conservative. Yeah. Even though they were gay, they were still so conservative. Mm. Not a lot of people, but just the, the fact that any people booed uh, blows my mind. Yeah. What are some of your favorite movies of all time? It's hard to pick because I watched so many. I used to watch like hundreds a year, so <laughs> like uh, it'd probably be easier to pick some off the top of my head, like immediately off the top of my head. Um, let's see, I like, uh, what you call it, Love Exposure by Sion Sono. Um, I like a lot of Mike films. What's that one about, Love Exposure? Um, it's about this, um, kid who's the son of a preacher, and his mom dies, and his dad, um, later, like, remarries, or get with another woman, and he discovers perversion, and he gets really into it. What does that mean, perversion? Like, um, he gets into, he gets, he, uh, starts hanging out with this crew who do, like, ninja shots. I that's the term I learned back when I was like searching the internet prior. This is a Japanese film. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, like upskirt, like penny upskirt shots, but he does it like do super oh. acrobatically, and he gets into like other forms of um, perversion. Like he went to like a pervert convention during the like the latter half of the movie. He also falls in love with this like this badass like what you call it, juvenile delinquent girl too. And she ends up being like his half sister, and then. Oh. Yeah, and also it's gonna get like kidnapped by like a cult. They get like taken up by cults because like wow. it's, the whole movie's about like religion and perversity. It's like four hour movie too. Four hours long. Yeah. What's the year on that one? Um, I think it was like 2010, 20. Oh, so pretty recent. Yeah. Uh, and then what was the second uh, movies you said? Um, I'm, a lot of Mike films. I like the what you call it, the DOH DOA trilogy, like this like. What you call it? Yaku said, like cop type drama trilogy, but okay. it, but the main character switch places every movie because it's like a reboot every movie. Okay, what do you mean? Like it's it's just like a it, it's just like a start over kind of. Yeah, so like Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two type deal, like but with each movie. I see. Mm. And what else? Do I like I like the Crank movies. I love um Neville Dean Taylor. I love their entire style. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, who else I like a lot? How many cranks are there now? Oh, there's two of them. There's talks of the third one, but I think that's in like in development hell. Or like yeah. in a break. I think they're working on like a twisted metal movie right now. Yeah, I wonder if if Ooh, that's gonna be good. Oh, I hope that that happens. I wonder if Jason Statham sort of feels like he's like on some whole other level now mm. with this at this point, you know? Or something. Yeah. So we won't want to do another crank. Who knows? I've I've no sense of Jace, Jason Statham's like general attitude, so I could be completely wrong on that. But uh, even if he doesn't, there was plans of them like going on with the other characters of Crank, like what they're doing. Really? Yeah. Like um Pedro. That's from, funny. <laughs> like the 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 guy that played Pedro from um Napoleon Dynamite, his character, like his oh, yeah. twin brother. Yeah. That. And, right. Corey Haim, if he like, some, if he was like alive, like his character would be in there. Yeah. As well as the girlfriend and like the doctor. I forgot but, Corey Haim was in that movie. Yeah, he he had a he had a like pretty max level mullet in that one. Oh yeah. What's the most extreme hairstyle you've ever had? I had the Yu-Gi-Oh back in high school. I had the Yu-Gi-Oh haircut. I'm not even joking about that. If I had pictures, I would show it. You had the Yu-Gi-Oh haircut. How did you, did you dye your hair? I didn't dye it, but I had that entire shape. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sort of like that other kid with the Goku hair that's popular on the internet, but I did it first. You did it first. <laughs> I believe you. In those pre-internet days. Now, how do you feel about Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2016? Um, I think it's, I feel like it's kind of like, it was a stealth ripoff of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay. But they had no choice but to go into, like, the card realm, because that was po- what's popular because oh, of yeah, Pokemon. Oh, yeah, huge. Like, originally it was supposed to be, like, multiple games. It was supposed to, be, like, play different games and, like, different type of challenges, but the whole card game thing got way too popular. Mm-hmm. Now, did you, here's my other question, did you have cable as a child? Yes. You yes. did have cable? Yeah. Because I often found that the kids who were like the big Yu-Gi-Oh kids were just were the kids who didn't have to like couldn't watch Toonami. Mm. But you are proving my theory wrong. Yeah, like it, I don't know what like attracted to me because I was not into like the Pokemon or like any of the Mons. You weren't in any of those. Yeah, like I thought Digimon was cool because it was like the hipster Pokemon because they had all the cooler haircuts. I never thought of it that way. That's an interesting take on Digimon. And but like. That one, gra- I like. I, t- I like. I like the the whole mind battle aspect of it. Mm-hmm. It was like pre death note mind battle games. Yes, a lot of mind games in Yu Gi Oh. Go ahead. Oh, oh yeah, the character design. I like the character design quite a bit, which is like one of the things that also lead me to believe is like a stealth rip off of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because you kind of rock in Josuke jo- Jotaro's like um, entire steez with the jacket on his shoulder. Yeah. With the metal on his jacket and all that. And the JoJo series, that's like an anthology series with like tons of different main characters. Yeah. That's the, everyone, that, that's like the number one anime that's been recommended to me lately. That and Sword Art Online. Have you watched that one? Um, I've been on my Netflix to like, um, my list thing, but I haven't got around to watch it just yet. Um, JoJo is like, new character every season. It's kind of like that British format where they like change the characters up every yeah. season. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like, and they got something for everyone. Like, if you're into like... Hulk Do No Ken meets like Castlevania. The first year just for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second one's a bit more Indiana Jones, as well as the third one, but Indiana Jones meets um, Pokemon, or Indiana Jones meets like Yu Gi Oh. Okay. For the third one, but it was predating Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon and all that because it was like late eighties. Oh, I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, it's going on for at least like twenty five years. And how many uh, iterations? Um, eight. They're on the eight right now. Wow. And it's the. They did, like, a whole reboot thing, so the A is, like, a reboot of, like, the fourth one, but, like, alternate history. Do they have some of the same, uh, creative team that they had on, uh, on, uh, the originals? Um, the same dude did it for, like, the wow, entire time. Wow, that's great. He's, like, this fashion guy. He's, like, really into fashion, because there's, like, a lot of references to fashion and, like, rock music into it. That's great. Which is one of the reasons why it hasn't gotten, it never really got released in America when it was, like, initially getting big. Because, like, all the licensing issues and, like, the characters named Vanilla Ice and all this other stuff. Wow, they go that far into yeah. it. Like, there's this guy named Vanilla Ice. He had, like, black hole powers where, like, he uses a black hole and you, like, rip off your legs with it. Ooh. That's pretty good. I'm just looking up the map for the World of Ruin so I can figure out where I'm supposed to go next. Uh, w- did you ever uh, play Guilty Gear? Yes. Love Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is another one that has a lot of references uh, Japanese, well, it's J- for those of you who don't know, Guilty Gear is a fighting game, probably the most over-the-top fighting game I know of, and it, it is a Japanese fighting game, but many of the characters are named after rock stars from the West, like Axl Rose, and I think it, they're not exact rip-offs, though, like, I think that character's name is Axl Lowe. Yeah, and there's, like, Chip Zanuff, Zenuff? Chip's Enough? Yeah. And there are a few other. Is that, is that, who's that, is that... Someone uh, rock star that I should know, like '80s, like a lot of '80s, like speed, like '80s, like hair metal and like speed metal type rep. Yeah, thrash metal. Mm-hmm. And then also that game has Bridget, mm. who was I think one of the first uh, trans characters I ever remember seeing in a video game. It's kind of one of the only ones. Pretty much, probably even like started the whole trend of that, and like every anime since then or every video game. Yeah, it's or, it's become a lot more common, huh? Yeah. I mean, I think there's always been characters like that, but I think that's the one, that's a breakthrough one. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was big. And then Milia Blade was in that who fought people with her hair, which was mm. sort of amazing. There was Medusa in the Fantastic Four who did that too, but mm. Milia Blade was great. Yeah, even the soundtrack had, like, a lot of, like, American metal, like, references. Sure. I even remember, or not just American, but, like, Western metal. Like, um, I remember, like, Soul Bad Guys, like, instrumental. Sounded like, um... Breathe the, 
free to breed by um, Nippon Death. Seems yeah. sort of instrumental as that song. Yeah, it's a good one. What are uh, what are what were some other video games that were big for you? Growing up, outside of Street to Raid series, I was always like mostly in, or like always into like fighting games. So I love like Virtual Fighter, Tekken, DOA. Sure. Um, I remember loving Comic Zone, which is like this weird meta comic Sega game where you like it says switching. Oh levels, yeah, I remember pages. it now. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is all clear in my mind. I remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. Jet Set Radio was lovely. I love Jet Set. Oh yeah, that's a great game. It's a little clunky, but the music and the just everything about it is just so so unique, really. And relevant in a way, I think, too, with the you know police state we're living in now. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's who you're running from more than anyone is the, uh, the, is, the is the cops. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a good one. I wonder if I'm going to be able to escape. Okay. Okay. Good. Because I don't think I'm actually ready to do this. Okay. Press right shifter. Okay. Good. I think I'm actually going to be able to do this right now, but Whoops. I because I think I need to go get some like items and stuff but what are you gonna do that dude has amazing hair he is pretty cool he's a gambler dude he i think he was like he's definitely a precursor to uh sephiroth from mm. final fantasy 7 because his name is setzer huh. and he looks really similar though he's not a villain in any any capacity he still looks like someone that would be in a scandinavian metal band though oh yeah yeah, he also, he, it, like, he has, like, the, sort of, like, the Prince vibe with, like, the ruffles and stuff, too, mm -hmm. like, on his, what do you even call that thing where, like, someone has, like, a, it almost looks like they're wearing, like, a napkin, but, like, in a stylish way? Oh, I forgot the name of that. Uh, it's not a handkerchief. That I mean, lacy, to, that lacy thing that... I used to know the name of it. Like, uh, an anchor used to wear that all the time. Like, a news anchor, I remember... It sort of, like, was very 80s, but also sort of very, like, Colonial Times reenactor. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think everyone listening knows exactly what we're talking about. But yeah. Setzer is definitely rocking one of those in a lot of the concept art for this game. Mm -hmm. And you can almost barely make it out in the pixels. And he has a badass long coat, yeah. as would be described by TV tropes. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what, was, like, what was, like, the premise of that Comic Zone game? Um, it looked like, it was like, if it was Japanese, it was definitely very influenced by American comic book industry. Like, this guy that drew comics gets sucked into his comic to, like, stop the world or something like that. I forgot, the, like, the, the main basic story. Uh-huh. But that's all I know. You got sucked into the comics and you know kung fu. Okay. And you can punch pages open. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so great. I feel like all the really innovative, like, it must have been so hard to make really weird, innovative games back then, but also maybe not just because video games weren't just, like, on the, like, radar yet as just a huge, huge industry. Like, someone was trying to tell me, and I don't know if I really believe this, that games, games industry now is bigger than the movie industry. I can do, see that. Do you think it's possible? I mean, everything's so cinematic and big and, like, probably costs just as much, well, it costs more to buy a game than to buy a movie. That's absolutely true. The ticket price of a movie is far, far cheaper than the ticket price of a fifty or sixty dollar video game. Yes. Even with the increased prices like of movies, if you go like during a non matinee time. Uh huh. And you go for two, it's still less than a video game. Yeah. Even if you're buying and you spend almost forty bucks, you're still spending less than if you were to buy the newest Zelda. I remember when Zelda outsold the ocarina of time outsold wild wild west the will smith movie <laughs> oh man and that was like a big deal kind of like oh this huge blockbuster didn't do as well as this video game or golden eye the video game doing better than the movie yeah was another another do you have any uh, systems right now not currently i want to get one the one was like ps4 it's like the new like h what was it the new hd or like vr like ps4 that's oh out. yeah was it the PS Neo, I guess they're calling it? I have no idea. I, I, I think, like, ooh, a big lumbering bear. Oh, maybe we need, if we have Sabin in our party, we can get something out of this guy. Mm. Uh, I just 
feel like, though, one of the ways to go these days is to do the PC. Yeah. I'm... Because then you can go on Steam ah, and see. play a ton of games that you could also play on consoles and also more indie games. That's mm. the thing that's great about Steam is it's got the indie games and it's got the, uh, the like, I guess you'd say big budget, big studio games, you know? Mm. But I wish I could afford everything mm. that exists in this world. Oh, oh, that reminds me of another game I really liked, um, No More Heroes. I love that series. What? Remind everyone what that game was. It's sort of like Scott Pilgrim if he was a, a like mercenary slash assassin in an assassin tournament. Yeah, that was the that was something that I was immediately reminded of by that game with Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, it's like the main guy looked like uh, Johnny Knoxville from Jackass, but way cooler looking with his like badass red red leather jacket. Yeah, and he had like a lightsaber that you had to like shake and like uh, almost like manual sexual release motion yep. with your Wii controller mm -hmm. in order to charge it up. Yep. That was a good one. How many of those, how many of those came out? Um, like, there was the first one, and then the reboot of the first one, or, like, the, the remix, or whatever you want to call it, and then there's the sequel. Okay. And the sequel was for Wii 2? They did them both on Wii? Yeah, I think they re-released it for, like, Xbox and PlayStation, but... Oh shoot, what are we getting into here? Level 5 death. That's gonna suck. That Please. is totally a punk band name. Oh no, it's not gonna kill us at all. It's not gonna suck at all. He's gonna play us some like 3 minute really punky songs. Oh my gosh. I hope we can kill him. Uh, or he, or I think also this guy, sometimes he runs away. Mm. I'm not sure. Oh. Or no, it didn't work. Oh no, it did work. Uh. Alright, let's do this. Kind of reminds me of that movie Legends. I mean, it was like horns. Oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, let's see. If we can bring back alive. Death look, looks really sad, though. Yeah, I think if we beat him, we get a new summon spell. Did you play any of the Final Fantasies? Uh, I played the fighting version of like the seven. We're, Air uh, guys. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's the one I played. Where like they had all the fighting game, like they they had a fighting game tournament and like Cloud and like um. Like Yuffie, not Yuffie, but Tifa. Um, T Tifa was like in it, and they were fighting. But you were just never, you were like a, you never a big RPG guy, or you just didn't have a love for Final Fantasy. Um, I like the designs, I like the story, but I never like played it through. I watched like the playthroughs on like YouTube and oh games yeah, and all that. Cause, Cause like when it, when it comes to games, I prefer like the action RPGs over like the turn based yep. stuff. Mm hmm. I hear that. Uh. Final Fantasy is definitely not about dexterity, and if you are beating Street Fighter Alpha on the hardest setting with a perfect, that is what you are about, my friend. I can probably get into it now because like I don't have enough time to like really good at command get command get uh, get good at commands. Yeah. So I'm like actually even looking at um visual novels or those like uh those games like Trauma Team or like Phoenix Wright. Oh, Phoenix Wright is great. Yeah. And they they even do now, like, sort of visual novel type games for, like, The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, they release these games, but they're hardly even games. They're kind of just... I don't know, I, I haven't played them, so I can't really speak to it, but mm. that's my understanding of it, is that it's it's not... It's sort of just... It's sort of this weird amalgamation of a video game, a comic book, and, like, a TV show, in a way. Yeah. And it's like, there's, mostly I've been getting into it outside, like, the whole not getting really good at, like, commands recently, um, is the, watching the anime versions of these things, like Danganronpa, that sort of thing. Mm hmm Whereas, like, the Murder Mystery, or, um, what's the other one I watched? Umineko. Which is, like, Umineko's way it looked like if Freddy Krueger was, like, a thousand-year-old Italian witch. Female? Yes. Okay. And. So, he go she goes into people's dreams. Well, not the dream part, but the troll and kill aspect. Okay. The kill troll. The troll kills. Yeah. Like, she takes you what you're about and then, like, reverses it on you. And mm -hmm. it's also, like, very brain battle heavy. Especially when you get... Especially when she gets into it with, like, the other witches in that series. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it takes place on this island with his family. And it's, like, also a murder mystery. Because, like, everyone in the family gets started getting killed one after another. You have to, like, figure out where's the witches 
or like a more realistic happen like like more realistic reason for why it happened yeah so it's like magic versus anti-magic fantasy versus like reality that sort of thing yeah yeah with the main guy being more like headstrong into like there's a logical explanation for this and you can like find it and he's like brain battling which is for the actual logical explanation is pretty insane all right and how long is that show they had episodes? um i think it was like a 27 episode show and how so how many people are in this family if they're all getting killed um about like i think around 16 to 19 oh okay that's big and you also have, like, the butlers and the maids in there, too. Okay. And various other witches that jump in. It's, like, a very big cast. <laughs> but it's set on an island? Like, yeah. Lost or something? Yeah, sort of like that. Like, on a mansion in, like, this island. Okay. And, and during the 80s, so no one has cell phones. Okay. That's interesting. And it goes further past the show, like, the manga and uh, the actual visual novels. It's, like, there's, like, eight iterations because, like, each story goes to a certain point, and then it ends, and they have to restart the cycle, restart the mystery to figure out a different explanation, and, like, all this other stuff start popping up. All yeah. the different family secrets start popping up. I see. I cannot find a town that sells, like, healing items. Oh, maybe right here. Mm. This, this one, hopefully, will. Because that's all I want is, like, some Phoenix down, just a little cushion. Um... So let's get into it. Are you doing Tinder? What are you? How how are the ladies treating you? Um, they're treating me all right. Yeah, it's a bit more neutral. I'm, I'm like kind of chilling out on that right now. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, it's like I'm. I think one of those things that that happens when I'm 30 now is like I'm a bit more selective with the personality types I go after now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm actually a bit more comfortable with like the more aggressive ladies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do with like a submissive or like what you call it, coy type girl. Yeah. My mom's, like, very boisterous and, like, loud or whatever, so that's why, that's all I, what I know how to handle. Wow, I like that that's, you've, you're, because I think we all have those, I think issues with our parents have such a big impact on our relationships, right? Yeah. Uh, and also the way we see relationships, like, if I'm dating a guy and he starts to act like, re do something that reminds me of my mom, I'm just like, oh, man. If it's not good, yeah. if it's not a good thing, I'm like, oh, am I, like, my dad in this situation? Or even the reverse, you mm -hmm. know? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like, the super shy girls, I don't know what to do with it. Like, as long as they're, like, really upfront and, like, obvious, and then I'm like, cool, awesome. Well, you're kind of a shy guy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'd say, so. I'd say a bit more balanced, but I lean more towards shy. Yeah. <laughs> In, like, social settings, I would say, mm. uh, you're a little bit on the shy side. Mm. Yeah. Bit introverted. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I'm pretty extroverted. I also, though, worry sometimes about putting my game face on, you know? It's mm. sort of, at what point are you putting your game face on, and at what point are you kind of being, like, a little fake, you know? Mm. But I guess it's better to try to just make the best of any situation. Yeah. Life jujitsu. Yeah. Life jujitsu. Uh, and, uh, oh, let's see. Okay, there's not any good items there, so that's not good. Do you know what time we started? What uh, time did you get here? I got here a little bit after New, 12. Noon. Yeah. I think we're probably, I feel like I've learned, I've gotten, like, an internal timer now for this show. It's crazy. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, I know when it's been... Like, pretty much exactly an hour, an hour, mm -hmm. ten minutes. It's like the hyperbolic time chamber in Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you watch any of the new Dragon Ball shows? Not yet. I really want to watch the current season, because, like, there's the, the evil Goku. Oh, yeah? With uh, the future trunks coming back from my year. Yeah. I was like, that got me intrigued. Prior to that, I've been, like, kind of, eh, with the exception of the whole, like, resurrection of Frieza. Yeah. I don't know if it was you, but someone shared a meme that was like, being a kid is when you look up to Goku, being uh, an adult yeah. is when you realize Vegeta is <laughs> more, right. more relevant. Yeah, that, I probably did that, actually. Also, I think Goku's like a little, like, verging on being a deadbeat dad. He, he is. Piccolo's a better dad than him. Yeah, Piccolo is definitely, definitely 
filling that void. To the point that another anime commented on it and talked about how Vegeta and Piccolo are better dads than Goku. Yeah. That was on um, Gintama. A whole conversation with all the girls in the cast were talking about that. That's pretty good. And uh, what are some other big things going on in anime right now? Do you watch Attack on Titan? Yeah, I, I watched that, but I think the the current, while waiting for season two, there's another show, Kabaneria the Iron Fortress, which is like the the king of the Attack on Titan of like 2016 right now. Okay. It's sort of same sort of what you call it premise, but they're like vampire zombies. Oh, but are they huge? They're they're like man size. Man size, regular size. Yeah. It's like kind of like steampunk. Japan, Neo Fuda. But it's got, yeah, it's got that, that same, the Slayer type people still have that same vibe. Yeah. Yeah, because Attack on Titan, I mean, that, that kind of killed the game. And I was surprised, too, because it seemed like so specific Mm -hmm. that it would become so popular. You know, usually things that become popular, like you've got this, like, cast of characters that all look really visually different and, uh, and, like, same with the villains. There's always, like, that one character you can relate to. I mean, I guess that's true in Attack on Titan to a certain degree. Mm. They just don't go as out there with the looks, you know? Yeah, I think because they're trying to go more realistic with certain aspects. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nobody with, like, crazy, crazy hair. Mm-hmm. Any of that. No. Though the fact that everyone's basically Spider-Man is a little bit less realistic. With the, the their gears. Oh, yeah, they're all going nuts. They even did a Spider-Man Attack on Titan uh, crossover. Yeah. Which I haven't read. But that's that's huge now in the comics. They they just go crazy on the. Cr- I mean, thanks Super Smash Brothers just opened the floodgates mm. for, for just media insane media crossovers. Yeah. Pretty soon, I think like you know, Super Smash Brothers are gonna get to play as like Oprah or something. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I'm actually looking forward to playing Cor- Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders would be good. Colonel Sanders as what you call it, Cloud Strife, like that cosplay. Yeah, that's 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 been going around. And, um, what's it, Ronald McDonald as, like, Sephiroth? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's an iconic image. <laughs> Cosplay is so great. Have you ever done anything like that? No, I don't think I... I have a lot of friends that do it, but I've mm-hmm. never done it myself. Like, yeah. Takes a pretty exhibitionist personality type. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's I would. I There's a lot of characters I can. I could be, like, a gender-bent, like... What'd you call it? Storm, maybe? Oh, yeah. That'd be sick. I think, uh, uh, I think I saw that, and it wasn't even, it wasn't, like, drag, it was just, like, it was just, like, a guy version of Storm. Yeah. It's pretty sick. Yeah. It's a bro version. I could be, like, Raven, or, like, Blade. Blade is good. Black Panther. I'm actually thinking of doing that Halloween. Black Mm -hmm. Panther. Yeah. Um, Scar from Full Metal Alchemist. Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. Could do that. Yeah. Black Panther, uh, so cool. The thing about Black Panther, especially in the comics, is he's sort of, like, is, like, so much more of a badass than anyone gives him credit for, because he's the richest person, pretty much, in Marvel Comics, and he's, I would say, the shrewdest guy in Marvel Comics. Like, he's so uh, calculating in this way, uh, especially in the 90s, early 2000s, when Christopher Priest wrote that comic. Oh, so great. But anyway... Is there anything coming up that you want to let people on the internet know about? Mm, I can't think of anything right now. I don't have anything right yeah. now exactly either. I don't have a date set for anything I uh. want to plug. But mm. but everyone should friend Akira on Facebook because he will become your 24-hour news cycle. <laughs> That's my final thought on that matter. Thanks so much for listening to Let's Gay with Johnny Jungle Guts. Me, the top-notch gamer. And stay tuned, we upload twice a week. Thanks so much for being on the show, Akira. Thank you for having me.